Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm your teacher, Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're looking at some more stoichiometry, specifically limiting reactant problems. Now, sometimes there are students who have some trouble with this, so we're going to uh, step away from chemistry for, any, for a second here and talk about something that is uh, maybe completely different, and it's grilled cheese sandwiches. Now, some people love grilled cheese sandwiches, some people hate them, but we're going to take a look at the reaction or the process for making a grilled cheese sandwich. So if you are going to make that, you're going to need two slices of bread. That's what the 2B stands for here. And you're going to need one slice of cheese. Now, I know some people like more than that on there, but we're going to just stick with one for right now. So two slices of bread and one slice of cheese makes one GCS, or one grilled cheese sandwich. So that's the recipe, or if you want to call it the equation, for making a grilled cheese sandwich. Now, let's imagine that we are going to make a bunch of sandwiches. So we look in the cupboard and we have 50 slices of bread and we have 50 slices of cheese. So my question is, how many sandwiches can we make? Can we make 50 sandwiches? Well, no, we can't, can we? We might have enough cheese to make 50 sandwiches, but we know that it takes two slices of bread to make one sandwich. So with 50 slices of bread, you can only make 25 sandwiches. And so do you see that even though we have both ingredients and we can make plenty of sandwiches, the fact is that one of our ingredients is going to run out first. And that ingredient that runs out first is what limits us in our ability to make the grilled cheese sandwiches. Now in chemistry, we say that the substance that we run out of first, which would be the bread in this case, is our limiting reactant. Sometimes it's called limiting reagent. It's the same thing, okay? So in our example, we run out of bread first, right? So bread is our limiting reactant. That's basically the reactant that is used up or consumed first in a chemical reaction. Or another way of saying that, it's the reactant that produces less product. All right, those, those two little phrases there mean the exact same thing, okay? Because in each case, you know, the, the bread was consumed first, right? Also, the bread would produce less product. We had enough cheese for 50, but we ha only had enough bread for 25, all right? Now, we have the limiting reactant, and then the other, or if you have more than two reactants, the others would be called excess reactant or excess reactants. And that's what's left over. So for example, after we make these 25 fabulous grilled cheese sandwiches, we're still gonna have a bunch of cheese left over. I guess 25 slices of cheese. That would be the excess reactant, right? That's what's left over. Now let's take a look at a couple examples here. We're gonna take lithium and sulfur, and we're going to react them to produce lithium sulfide. So lithium is Li, uh, sulfur is in its most natural form, usually S8, as it turns out, and we are going to make some Li2S. So the question says, if we take 0 0.906 grams of lithium and react it with 2.79 grams of sulfur, S8, how many grams of lithium sulfide can we expect to produce? And we have a couple more questions. Which of the reactants is the limiting reactant and which one is the excess reactant? Now, here's the plan. Here's how to work these problems. You're going to take both of these reactants here, the 0.906 grams of lithium and the 2.79 grams of sulfur, and you're going to have to carry out the three-step process for both of those. So I'm going to write both of those values down here, as you can see, and I'm going to con convert both of these to grams of Li2S. So I'm going to have to do the, the three-step process twice. And then I'm going to have two answers. The smaller answer is going to be the correct one. That's the one, that the, the, the amount of, of product we can actually expect to produce. Okay, so we're going to find the lower of the two numbers. So let's, let's start with the first one here. 0 0.906 grams of lithium. What's step one? It's convert to moles, isn't it? So in our first conversion factor, I'm going to put the grams on the bottom and one mole on top. And looking at the periodic table, 
there are about 6.94 grams in a mole of lithium. So I can cancel grams now. The second step is the mole ratio. So in my second conversion factor, I'm putting in lithium on the bottom, since that's what I'm starting with, and I'm converting to lithium sulfide, so that goes on the top. And right out of the balanced equation, I can look at uh, the uh, coefficients here. Lithium sulfide is eight. Lithium is 16, so this is a eight to 16 mole ratio. Once again, you have to have a balanced equation. If you don't have a balanced equation, you're gonna get the wrong answer. All right, so make sure that you've done that. Lithium is out. We're now in moles of lithium sulfide. We want to be in grams of lithium sulfide. So we have the last step, which is to convert to the final unit, which is grams. So one mole goes on the bottom, and grams goes on the top. And if we add these together, we have two lithiums at 6.94 apiece, and sulfur is about 32.1 approximately, so we add that up to about 45.94 grams in a mole of this stuff. So I can cancel moles, top and bottom, and now I can do the arithmetic on my calculator. 0 0.906 divided by 6.94 times 8 divided by 16 times 45.94, and my answer is about 3.00 grams of lithium sulfide. Now that might be the answer, it might not be. We have to compare it to the next process. We had to do the whole thing over again with the sulfur. So once again, step one is convert to moles. So grams on the bottom, one mole on top. S8, about 32.1 times 8, so that is about 256.48 grams in a mole of sulfur, so that goes out. And then our next conversion factor, that is going to be the mole ratio. So S8 on the bottom, and Li2S on the top, and this is an 8 to 1 mole ratio, 8 to 1. So S8 cancels top and bottom. And now in our last conversion factor, we're going to convert to the final unit, which is grams, as we can see here. So 1 mole on the bottom, grams on top. And how many grams in a mole of lithium sulfide? Well, we just figured that out a minute ago. It's 45.94. So moles are out. And now we can calculate this 2.79 divided by 256.48 times 8 times 45.94, and we get an answer of 4.00 grams of lithium sulfide. So we have two answers. The question is, how many grams can we expect to produce? The answer is always going to be the smaller one in these problems, so it's 3.00 grams of lithium sulfide. Now, which of the reactants is the limiting reactant? Well, remember, in our previous slide, we had a definition that said the limiting reactant is the reactant that produces that smaller amount. So that means we could go back here and say, oh, it's going to be lithium. So lithium is the limiting reactant. It's the one that runs out first, which means which one is going to be left over at the end, the excess? Well, it would be the other one. So sulfur, S8, is the excess reactant. So do you see how to work these problems? It's the same three-step process as we had before, except we have to do it twice, so we're going to get some more practice at doing the process. Let's do one more problem here. In the previous problem, how many grams of the excess reactant were left unreacted? So that's a good question. If you're thinking about waste management, and being environmentally friendly, our goal is to have as little waste as, pro as possible. So in this last example here, notice that we actually used 0.906 grams of lithium, okay? That's what ran out. So why don't we take that 0.906 grams of lithium and use that to figure out how many grams of sulfur we're really gonna use, you know, how we had how much? We had 2.79 grams available to us, but we obviously didn't use it all. So we're going to find out how much we really used. So I'm going to take the 0.906 grams of lithium, and we're going to figure out how many grams of sulfur we use. So way down here at the end, we're going to figure out grams of sulfur. 
And I'm going to have to go through the three-step process once again to figure that out. So step one, convert to moles. So in the first conversion factor, grams goes on the bottom and one mole goes on the top. And there we, are, we have the 6.94 grams again from the periodic table for lithium. So grams are out. We're in moles of lithium. Step two is the mole ratio. So we have that. Lithium goes on the bottom. Sulfur, S8, goes on the top. This time it looks like a 1 to 16 mole ratio. It's 1 to 16. Lithium goes out. We're now in moles of sulfur. We want to be in grams of sulfur. So next step is convert to final unit, which is grams. So in the next conversion factor, one mole goes on the bottom and grams goes on top. And how many grams in a mole of S8? About 256.48. So moles are out. And now we can do the arithmetic 0.906 divided by 6.94 divided by 16 times 256.48. And this tells us that we actually are going to be using or expect to be using 2.09 grams of sulfur. That's how much we actually used. Now, in the previous slide, we said that we had 2.79 grams of sulfur available to us. Well, we used 2.09 grams. So do you see all we have to do is subtract to find out how much is left over. So 2.79 grams available minus 2.09 grams used gets us 0 0.70 grams of sulfur left over. This is like saying if we have a bag of 10 apples that we buy from the store and you eat seven of them, you use seven of them, how many are left over? Well, you have to subtract. 10 minus 7 means you have three apples left over. It's the same thing here. We had 2.79 grams available. We used up 2.09 grams in the reaction, so we subtract to find out how much is left over. Hope you learned something from this video about limiting reactant problems. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. You're on my uh, AP Chemistry Complete course here on my YouTube channel. And please give me a thumbs up so we can spread the word about AP Chemistry. And I'm your uh, host here, Jeremy Krug. Thanks for watching. Join me again where we can learn some more chemistry, chemistry together.